I still haven't finished with some requirements for effective Bible study. Some may say, man, he's taking a long time. But we've actually seen quite a few things, and you know, and I've actually been blessed through this as I had to study all of this. What's all needed for me to have an effective Bible study? And I think we all need to grow spiritually. I really believe that. I, I don't think we'll ever get to a point where we can say, okay, I know enough. I don't think we can get there. So we still need study. So let's go to the book of uh, John this, this evening. Book of John and uh, chapter eight. To, st uh, to start there, chapter eight. And I'm gonna read Verse 30 to 32, chapter 8 says, As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And today, I want to look at effective Bible study requires patience and persistence. Amen? Patience and persistence. But let's pray before we go into the study. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. And we thank you that once more you have allowed us to come together here in your holy name. We thank you for your promises. Where there's two, three, or more gathered in your name, you will be in the midst of them. And so we believe you are here. And we thank you for that. And we pray that you would open our eyes, open our hearts, open our understanding to receive your word, which you have prepared. And I pray that you would put the words in my mouth that you would have me say. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Last week we saw effective Bible study requires prayer, and it does. But it also requires patience and persistence. And I'm going to talk about this a little bit here. And we see here, as he spake these words, many believed on him. Here, as Jesus was speaking, many believed. And then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. And we see here, the ones that believed on him, those are the ones he spoke to. If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. So we can believe and still not be Christ's disciple. Okay? We can believe, and our Bible study probably isn't effective because we sometimes, God doesn't walk away from us, but we sometimes tend to kind of get away from God, don't we, as believers. And I've seen this through the years and so many people, and to tell you the truth, I've been at in some points of my life where I was very discouraged as well because we do live in, a fle in the flesh. And the flesh sometimes discourages us because circumstances that are in our lives. So yes, we need to still keep on walking with Christ. And then he says after that, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. This promises to those that will be patient and persistent in their Bible study. Amen? It's not to those that believed, but then never study their Bible or don't read their Bible. They won't have much understanding in what the Bible teaches. This promises to those that walk with the Lord, in other words. Let's go to Colossians chapter 1, and I'm going to read verse 23. And here it says, same thing, if ye continue and the faith grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. You know, sometimes we see people, they accept Christ, and for a little while they are very faithful, and it seems like they are so happy they're saved, and then all of a sudden you see them kind of missing one Sunday, all of a sudden two Sundays, all of a sudden once a month, and then after a while, they don't even go to church. Yet they say they are saved, and yet they say they read their Bible, but lots of them say, well, I kind of stopped that too because I don't have much understanding when I read. And that is exactly because there's no persistence, no patience. You know, God won't allow us to understand everything right away. 
I learn new things every day still, amen? Every day. So we need to be patient and continue in the faith, grounded and settled. You know, and I'm going to go here as well to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16 says, Take heed unto thyself, and here Paul is talking to Timothy, Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Now here Paul is saying, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. And Paul is talking to Timothy, knowing Timothy as a saved man, but he's still telling him, look, you need to continue in the doctrine of the apostles. Amen? You need to continue in this doctrine. You know... The Bible says in Proverbs 25, 2, it is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. Amen? So we need to search out what does the Bible teach. We want our Bible study to be effective. We want to grow spiritually. And what is the reason? And, and this is a good thing, I think, to ask ourselves, why do I want my Bible study to be effective? What is the reason behind it? Why do I read my Bible? It is for me to grow spiritually, to, and I, yes, pray that God will give me understanding so I can grow, I can have knowledge and wisdom in his word, but not just to keep it for myself, amen? It should always be so others can learn from what God has shown me his word teaches, amen? It should always be the reason that we should not be selfish. We should want to teach others of what the Bible teaches us in his word. And the Bible, well, the most important thing it teaches us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen? And the Bible teaches from front to back, we see Jesus in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. There is... So many things one could preach out of the Old Testament that show us that Jesus will come. And in the New Testament, of course, we see he has come and that he will come again. Amen? And that he will come again. So yes, but there's a lot of things we learn and our Bible study becomes more effective if we continue to be persistent in our Bible study. Let's just say it this way. When we got, go home on Sunday, and I know there's not a lot of dust in Canada. Now in Mexico, where we live, there was a lot of dust. And uh, I see uh, Sister Kathy saying here, yes, they were there at our house. There's a lot of dust there. So I always said, don't let dust fall on your Bible. You should use it enough so no dust is on your Bible. Amen? Use it enough. Not just go home, okay, now I heard some preaching, now I'm good for a week or for half a week. No, but also study the Bible. See what God has to say, and it will comfort us during the day. It will comfort us during the day. So, yes, it is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but honor, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. The Bible is the word of of the eternal God. This is something we need to understand. Or creator. And he created us in his image. It is the word of the eternal God. So when we read the Bible, and I know I say this more times, but it's not just reading the Bible, it's God talking to us. Amen? So we should want to hear what God has to say, or Creator has to say every day. I remember being a little child, and I wanted to always be what my dad wanted, what my dad was, you know? I would always look up to my dad. And God is our Heavenly Father. You know, we should want to be more like Him. Amen? We should want to be more like Him. And if we are persistent 
If, there, if there's persistence and patience in our Bible study, you know something? We will become more like him every day. In this body, we will never be perfect. But you know something? We can grow spiritually. We can become more like him. He tells us in one part of scripture, be ye holy because I am holy. Now why would he tell us to be holy if we can't be holy? Amen? Now my wife told me on Sunday, you know, something, I like it when a pastor preaches and he smiles. You never smile. You always look mad, she tells me. You should try smiling sometimes when you preach. And I said, well, you know something? Then it might not be me. But yeah, I guess you can smile sometimes. It's good to have a wife that's honest, amen? So yes. But it, smiling is good, and I just want you all to know, I don't get mad when I preach. I get passionate sometimes. But I love the Word of God. And I just want to fall more in love with the God, Word of God. And I just wish everybody wanted to do that. That's my prayer, you know? And, and so it's not that I'm mad, even though I look mad. It's like Pastor Wood said on Sunday, Brother Henry, there's nothing pretty about you. He made a good point, amen? He said, Brother Henry, there's nothing pretty about you, except your wife, he says, <laughs> and your heart. <laughs> okay, so that was a blessing, though, that he said my heart as well. So when I don't look like I'm mad, well, I can't help that. Amen. Okay, well, let's go back here to the message. The Bible is the word of the eternal God, and it is not possible that we will understand all of it in a short time. I personally believe it is very difficult to understand all the word of God in a lifetime. Because there are so many things I don't understand. And like I've said, I've read through the Bible since I got saved at least once every year. I already finished this year. I finished last month. And some years I read through it twice. And there's so many things I don't understand yet. Every time I read through it, there's new things I Things that I studied, I read, and all of a sudden, boom. Wow, why did I not understand that before? But that's how God works. And the thing with God is, he knows exactly what you and what I, what we're going to do with his word once he gives us understanding. Amen? He already knows so sometimes I think he hides things from us because he knows we're not going to use it for his honor and glory. Amen? And he wants us to use it for that. So yes, it is not possible that we understand all of the Bible in a short time. It is designed to be the book of a man's life, his entire life. And no man will exhaust its treasures completely. I don't think anybody can. You know, uh, I have a lot of books, not as many as I should have, but I also have from David Cloud. And David Cloud, in one of his books, I read some time back, and it, it touched my heart that uh, one of his friends, one of his friends, uh, David Cloud there says he actually knew the New Testament almost off by heart. And he said, and then his friend, he just lived for the Lord. He preached and he teached and, and he was just on fire for the Lord. And then he got kidney disease. And he said, and his friend just said, the Bible has no flavor anymore. You know, this flesh once it starts suffering, sometimes it just almost blames God for it. Almost blames God for it. And 
everything we go through is, there's a purpose behind it. We don't understand it sometimes, but yet I believe the purpose is always to come closer to God, have a closer walk with God, and not go further away from God. Because, you know, this book will do two things. It will take us away from sin. Well, sin will do two things. This book, the Bible will take us away from sin, or sin will take us away from the Bible. It just doesn't go together. So if there's sin in our life, sometimes God allows things to happen, and sometimes even when there's not sin, like this pastor, and he just said, you know, he was reading, and there was no flavor it anymore. What is God allowing us to go through right now? And then sometimes worries, we worry during the day, we try to fix everything in our mind instead of going to God, and then we even forget to read the Bible sometimes, don't we? I've been there. And that's not a good feeling. You know, and I think every pastor can go through that. Did you know that Satan hates everyone that serves God? with a passion, with a passion. And he attacks each and every person very hard if he serves God in very difficult ways, in different ways. But it's called spiritual warfare. If we're believers, we probably all went through spiritual warfare in our lives. I go through it all the time. And I thank God that I read the end of the book. Amen? We win. Amen? We win. In Christ, we have victory. In Christ, we have victory. So yes, if hard times come, we need to still keep on keeping on. You know, the fruit is there for those that keep on keeping on. But if we get, well, you know, I don't see any fruit. I just think about the mission we started in Mexico. After four months, not one visitor, we could have said, well, maybe God was mistaken. Maybe God didn't want us here. Or maybe we were mistaken. Maybe God wanted us somewhere else. It would have been easy to do that. Because you do get discouraged if you don't see anybody come to church. I've had to learn not, allow, not to allow the discouragement to discourage me to a point where I stop studying the Bible. Because a church like this, a pastor would love to see the church filled. Amen? He would love to see that. Every church. But you know something? With Christ, one soul is worth more than all the riches in the world. So it's not that much about numbers. But it's about those people that are there, are they submitted to God's will, surrendered to God's will? That's what we need to learn, to surrender completely. That's where God wants his children. Amen? That's where he wants us. So yes, you know, like I said, as you read through your Bible, you will learn new things all the time, all the time. You know, I, my prayer is always this, and I, I look at Luke 5, uh, 8, 15, and you don't have to go there, but you know, it says, but that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, Keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. Amen. My prayer is always this. God, let the seed fall on good ground. As I read, not even when I just, 
praying for other people, but as I read the Word of God. Let the seed fall on good ground so your wisdom will bloom in my life. Your knowledge would grow in my life so you can use me to teach others how much you love them and what you have done for them. That should be the desire of each and every believer. Of each and every. So if we continue, if we are persistent, if we keep on praying, as we saw, saw last week, be patient, not want to know everything right away. I had a friend of mine in Mexico say once, you know something? I asked him, so are you reading your Bible this year? Are you reading through it? And he says, you know something? I stopped reading the Bible because I don't understand hardly anything at all. And I took him to the book, and I don't have that here, but I took him to the book of Revelation, and I'm going to go there just a little bit, and I showed him this. Book of Revelation chapter 1 says, Blessed is he that readeth, chapter 1, verse 3, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy. So if you want God's blessing upon you, if you just start reading, your Bible reading will become more effective. If we're just being obedient in that, amen? We just need to keep on keeping on so we can be blessed. Persistence is essential in the Christian life. Feelings come and go. The child of God must continue in the things of Christ whether he feels like it or not whether the situation is difficult or easy. We need to keep on going. And you know, when you look at, uh, at different countries, how good we have it in Canada. Here, we have the freedom to go out there and actually talk to people and tell them what Christ has done for them. And what saddens me so much, there's so few people churches or Christians that do that anymore. Even in Forest City Baptist when I was there back then, lot of, lots went out visiting. But most of them would just put tracks in the mailbox. And I would always knock on the door. You know, I would at least like to ask a couple of questions. Have you ever thought, and one of the questions I like to ask, have you ever thought about what would happen if you died today? Have you ever thought about where you would go? And I think it's a fair question, because we will all die, won't we? Each and every person. So yes, we need to be out there. We need to talk to people, but we need to study our Bible so we can tell them exactly what God has promised them as well. God promises eternal life not to the good, but to the sinner. Amen? A person in Mexico asked me once, who can go to that church? Well, first he asked, what is that there, that new building? And it was our first mission we had started. And the brother that was with me, he says, that's a church. We go there. And he's our pastor. And who can go there? Or what do you ask to permit the people to do there? Or what do you not permit the people to do there? And then I said, look, the first question, who can go there? All the sinners. If you're a sinner, you're welcome. Amen? If you're a sinner, you're welcome. Because Christ came for the sinners. What do we allow you to do or what we do, do we not allow you to do? I told him, look, my job is to teach you what Jesus did for you, how much he loves you, and then once you understand that and believe that Jesus died for your sins, he will show you what you should and what you shouldn't do. That's not my job. My job is to teach you that Jesus loves you and he wants to save you. Amen? The rest is not my job. The Holy Spirit will give you those convictions if you come and you accept. So yes, 
Christ died for all sinners, all. So we need to continue if we feel like it or not. In Bible study and in visitation, there will be periods in which our heart will sing and the meaning of scriptures will <laughs> leap off the pages of the Bible and will come alive. You know, I've had those days. Man, I feel so spiritual some days. It seems like God is so good. And then there's days when things happen that the flesh, uh, while bad things can happen to us, and then we don't feel that spiritual, do we? But we still need to take the same time for God than when we feel real spiritual. We still need to be patient and keep on keeping on, studying and talking to people about Christ. And then our Bible study will become effective. God will see, look, I can use this person. It doesn't matter in what circumstance he is, he is still faithful. He still puts me before anything else, and he still humbles himself and surrenders to my will. The hardest thing for us people is to admit we are wrong. Maybe just your pastor has that problem, right? Everybody else probably doesn't have that problem here. But that's the hardest thing for us to admit. We are wrong. And we must remember that we live in a body of this death, Romans 7, 24. This body does not like to admit it's wrong. That's just the flesh. Some, of, some people say the old nature in us. But the divine nature is different. The divine nature admits we're wrong when we're wrong. Amen? And that's the beauty of having been born again. You know, uh, we need to learn to worship the Lord, to worship the Lord at all times. You know, uh, David, King David spoke of a condition in Psalms. He said, for I am become like a bottle in the smoke, Yet do I not forget thy statues. In other words, King David was saying that he felt all dried up like a leather bottle that was left over a fire. But what does he say? Yet do I not forget thy statues. He didn't feel like serving God. But he says, I still do anyway. And that's what we should do. That's what we should do. We should still serve God. We need to be patient. God will give us the understanding we need. And you know, the child of God will go through times like David did experientially. And he must do what David did. Yet do I not forget thy statues. Even when Bible study comes almost boring, or discouraging. Now, I'm not going to ask if anybody here has ever been bored when he reads the Bible. But I've heard people say, you know, some parts of the Bible are very boring. Especially where there's just names. And you know something? There's a reason for that as well. We can learn a lot from those names. But you know, but even if Bible study becomes boring or discouraging, just keep on keeping on, and the blessing will return. And the blessing will return. One preacher wisely said, read the Bible when you feel like it, and when you don't feel like reading it, read it until you do feel like it. Amen? I think that's good advice. If we don't feel like studying our Bible, study it. Who puts that feeling in us? 
God? Does God want us to feel bored as we read the Bible? You know, at one time, as I was reading the Bible, my mind would wander. And all of a sudden, I noticed, wow, I read, but I don't even remember what I read about. Has that ever happened to you? And I've started one thing, and God showed me this. And I thank God for it. And I pray that this way, God, I pray that you would pray in the name of Jesus Christ and his shed blood, that you would send that demon that gives me, that's bothering me here as I study, away from me. Because it's Satan trying to distract us from being faithful to God and listening to God. He does not want us to listen to what God has to say, does he? And you know something? Somehow that stopped. God sent that spirit away from me. Although we are saved, Satan and his demons still want to distract us from God's blessings. Amen? We need to understand that. He does want to distract us. He does not want us to grow. He does not want us to say, yes, I love the Lord and I'm going to serve him with all my heart and I surrender my life to him. That's what he does not want us to do. And he wants us to think that reading the Bible and studying the Bible is boring. It is not. Believe me. It's a blessing. Take time to spend with God. And you know, I just believe, and as I've said, these are studies I did as just a little after I was saved, as I was discipled. And they've helped me a lot back then. And you know something? They're still helping me a lot. So I can stay firm in my belief that God will not forsake me and that God will be there when I ask him to help me in any situation I find myself. And yes, that he will give me the understanding that's needed for me to teach others about him. Amen?